Welcome to the CNBC post-budget analysis. Now, if you carefully go through the South Africa's Finance Minister's National Budget address earlier today, there is but one single mention of the country's youth. I am Karabole Tata. You're tuned in to today's special CNBC Africa broadcast, What, When and How. The country's youth are left wondering what incentives or structural support has been put in place for the way forward. I am joined for this discussion by Zanele Gunene, who is an associate financial planner at BDO Wealth Advisors, and Kopano Mire, who is a growth hacker at the Fund Factor. To you both, I thank you for your time. He came, he delivered the budget, yes. he quoted from the good book, mm -hmm. but Zanele, <laughs> was he good for the youth? I think he was, you know, um, he spoke about the youth in a broader aspect. If you look at what he said for ESCOM, for example, and I don't know if you'll agree with me on this, Kopano, um, is that he said that they will not be help, they will not be rescuing ESCOM. So in order for them to rescue ESCOM, that would take a whole lot of funds. And they will take those funds, instead of using them to help the youth for job creation, those funds would have gone to ESCOM. But he said we're not rescuing them. So those funds will then now go into the youth and will now go to those other pro uh, other pro other programs or other uh, projects. Between me and you, Zanella, mm -hmm. I just want to say that there was something subtle that he said and that ESCOM will be getting 23 yes. billion rands yes. a year for the next three years, which yeah. averages to about 70 billion. So yeah. for those that didn't win, if you look at ESCOM, <laughs> is that 70 billion? If it's not a win, I don't know what it is. Kopano, um, over to you. But before we tackle any budget related question mm. what's a growth hack <laughs> i knew when i asked you that question so i basically develop strategies that drive growth in the company mm -hmm. and i use principles such as marketing <laughs> analytics all kind of technical terms like search engine optimization and stuff like that oh man all the young things i <laughs> like hearing from you know we are geared up for the fourth industrial revolution here yes what do you make of the budget did it speak to you as the youth constituency yes yeah, so i think the minister said a lot of right things. Mm -hmm. I'm always concerned about the implementation of what was said. So to your point, uh, he did mention that uh, around over 20 billion will be uh, put aside for ESCOM right mm -hmm. after saying they will not be taking on ESCOM. Of course. Debt, you know? <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, the youth is a very broad spectrum. Uh -huh. And he did speak about education, mm -hmm. um, you know, fu uh, putting funding into programs for maths and science. He did speak about fintech programs and he did speak about uh, putting more money behind cedar you know to help around incubation so i, I may be the negative one here but zanele when i think about the youth constituent i think most of it that's currently in south africa are without jobs and are in the labor market mm -hmm. so i'm looking for like greater youth absorption we do have the yes program mm -hmm. but most people who talk about the yes program say that it's an underachiever largely so by the number of uh, youth uh, employment opportunities is created and we even heard the president during the state of the nation mm -hmm. urging more companies to join that says that they are not getting critical mass mm. into employment right are you worried about the labor market aspect of the unemployed youth I am quite concerned about it. But then again, he also mentioned that within the jobs fund, they would be putting some more money in there to create more employment for young people, mm -hmm. as well as the employment incentive that's also going to be um, coming up in which employers, and that's the most important thing. You want the private sector to be able to create jobs. So by having the employment incentive there put in place, they could at least claim back some of the funds. It will encourage employers from the private sector to take on more youth. But South Africa is such a bad place for any SA-facing company, in a mm -hmm. sense, because mm -hmm. margins are low, uh, mm -hmm. profits are low. It's yeah. very difficult operating from a South African point of view. Yes. So for me, I was left wondering who this budget was supposed to pander for because I don't mm -hmm. think it attracts as much new capital into South Africa mm -hmm. and it doesn't, I don't know if it incentivizes existing capital enough. Yeah. But the, what I what I picked up from the budget mm -hmm. was that um, Tito wasn't wasn't saying Mr. Yeah, Mbowen. Mr. Mbowen, I'm so <laughs> sorry. Um, he was saying that he wasn't saying we're going to raise money to make more money, more revenue. He was saying we are going to fix this problem, and the only way to fix the problem is just to 
to look at the systems that we are currently using and better them. Mm. You know, so in that sense, I believe that as he even in uh, he used an analogy of seeds and sowing. Um, and by that, I understand that we are not going to try and now create this one million jobs today uh -huh. and what today, you know. <laughs> and it's quite surprising <laughs> that in election year, he's not making these big promises. He's mm. basically saying this is where we are now and we're going to try and fix this. By not implying putting anything new in, we are going to look at the strategies mm -hmm. that are there and we're going to try to make it better. Kupan is only saying that the minister used a bit of honey to go with that oh vinegar. Yes. But <laughs> was the honey enough for the youth? Ooh. I'm not too sure at this point in time. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there could be hidden cards mm -hmm. uh, spared for the actual election times. But he did refer a lot to how they would be supporting youth absorption into mm -hmm. the economy. You know, so the yes campaign is there, I agree. But if you look at the main employer around, you know, the economy, it's not so much big corporates than it is startups or SMEs in the sector. So there is some support behind mm -hmm. the two. And the Yes campaign won't work on its own. I, I'll have to say that mm. much. Okay. Yeah. So I believe there needs to be more done from, from other partners. In so the here's what I think, right? I think South Africa finds itself in a very tentative position, if you will, yeah. and very precarious, largely because of ESCOM. And mm. I largely, um, a large part of the concentration of the budget, or at least the market expectation, was on ESCOM. Because yeah. we need to keep the lights on before we speak sure. about the fourth industrial revolution. Sure. Fair, right? But I'm surprised that, you know, Governor number eight, as he calls himself, <laughs> current finance <laughs> minister, governor minister, yeah. did not have any clear incentive yes. program. And I'm speaking about the youth that may have gone to an extent of establishing a business for themselves. Mm. There's no, you know, incentives of uh, tax breaks for those that have started a uh, company and there's, you know, of youth age mm. if they are employing even mm. further. So there's a lot of innovatism that I think was not in this budget. And yeah. if I was still part of the youth, yeah. I would definitely not think this was a youth-friendly budget. So mm. what should he have said? So I think uh, the minister could have spoken a lot on maybe to, to emphasize this point on what's happening on the groundwork. So I'm from a funding sector and I do know there are things in place to help you know, up and coming entrepreneurs or SMEs or startups, such as the Section 12J, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. we're incentivizing people to invest so we can invest more in startups. So those things weren't being said at a very high level, mm -hmm. but I still believe there's all groundwork happening. Uh, to expect the minister in that amount of time to go in that much detail, I think was a bit unreasonable, mm -hmm. but to your point, there is little room left for the youth to feel inspired and motivated by that speech on itself. It's this youth that must go and vote come the 8th of May. Do they have a reason? Yes, they do, because if you do not put your say in, then nothing's going to happen. And voting is the perfect way to say, this is what I want, this is who I want to represent me, and these are the people who are going to make it happen. Um, and it's also quite important for the youth to be involved um, in politics, just to know what's happening, because this is our country, you know. Um, before we got on stage, you did say that this is, you know, they're planning for us, basically. Mm -hmm. So if we are not involved, we will, we will not know what's going to happen in our future. Why would you be excited about what the minister spoke about, which is uh, the Reserve Bank governor's uh, ambitious fintech project, as he calls it? Do you know anything, then, what has been put on the table there? Yeah, so not from a program or mm -hmm. operational plan perspective, but I do take a keen interest in the minister or you know the, the government having a view of the, the future is technology. You know, the fourth industrial revolution has come. So to hold tight onto unskilled labor, hold tight onto jobs that cater to that market alone, I think will be disadvantaging the whole country, evidently the youth of, to, uh, uh, you know, the working force of tomorrow if we don't look that far. So I do, and I mean, the minister made a joke around how the speech was prepared and it being, you know, um, uh, updates being put on Twitter and so on. So I think it is important to have that much of a forward-looking view in terms of, you know, uh, fintech and so on. And I do know a lot of people that, that are benefiting from that space of fintech. Mm. So there are agencies or, or rather organizations that are working really hard, like uh, RMB's Alpha Code, mm -hmm. who are incubating or accelerating fintech companies. So there is a lot of work happening. Maybe there might not be as much work around uh, awareness, but there is something mm. happening. And possibly the minister, you know, the office of, of you know, the minister of finance could look around collaboration and then making people aware of what's actually happening so people don't think if it's not being said, it's not happening at all. Yes. 481 million allocated to small business enterprises. How 
how much do you think we can get a penetration in terms of not only youth employment, but establishing young businesses if mm. the fourth industrial revolution is the future and our, our leaning towards technology might be the answer to some of the problems that we are facing now. Mm -hmm. Surely you expect a lot of, at least some critical mass of the beneficiaries of what would be 481 million to be the youth, right? Yes, I would, but at the same time, you cannot just give a young person money. You need to train them, you need to teach them on how to run the business. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to one economist, and he was saying one of the problems with all the um, funding that they give to SMEs is that, um, that the businesses do fail within the first 12 months, but that's because of a lot of people are starting businesses out of desperation because they are unemployed. So, and then mm. the businesses fail because they don't have that motivation to say, this is what I'm working towards, I'm building an empire of some sort. So mm. I think that with the funding that will go to the youth, they will need a better training or a better incubation program that will ensure that the business that they build is one that will create more jobs. You know, it's not just a, a short term, I'm just trying to survive, but one that says I'm going to build it for future, future generations. So if the funding does go predominantly to the youth, then we should then make sure that they are trained or um, incubated in, in a way that in the way that they that will make their businesses more successful. Kupan, I'm going to finish with you here. There's a mm. bit of mis-message when, when you listen to what government intends to do yeah. versus what it does. So when I, hear, when I hear a finance minister, governor finance minister, mm. say that he's allocated some 112 billion to higher education sector in South mm. Africa, I ask myself, why do we still have, uh, you know, an impasse between uh, the Durban University management and the students there? Yeah. Like, w what is happening on the ground seems very disconnected to what you're hearing in Parliament. True, very true. So my concern, and, you know, to echo your point, is if you look at supply and demand, what's, been, what's happening in institutions, mm -hmm. um, you know, higher education and what the corporate world wants, there's a bit of a mismatch. Mm -hmm. So no matter how much money you put in that area, if it can't really feed in what's being demanded out in the corporate world, um, then there really isn't uh, any, any much effectiveness or impact to use in that. And I agree to your point. I heard the minister speak a lot around building new schools, um, but not so much on the educational system itself, around what's important to learn. You, you know, he didn't mention briefly touch on things such as fintech, maths, and science, but how do we operationally and progressively at, uh, attend to those issues so we don't have a, a situation like you're saying in Durban um, or things where there's a mismatch between you know, tertiary institutions and what's happening in corporate? To be fair to the minister, he did mention uh, 3.7 billion which will be allocated to land and agricultural programs for emerging farmers to acquire land to farm on. The minister is a part-time farmer <laughs> himself, so you can expect that he supports that as, a, mm -hmm. as an industry that can really uh, be critical to South Africa's current woes. Are we finding this enough motivation in that? Because data suggested earlier that you know, investors are not willing to put up money into South Africa's agriculture, mm -hmm. largely because the land question has not been resolved. So in the meantime, who takes these risks? Is it just South Africa facing young people? And what happens when you know, the support for ESCOM overweighs everything else? Mm. Um, so just to touch on what you first started uh, with was for the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. Um, for him to even to put that there is to say it's more sustainable. Agriculture is a more sustainable um, sector or industry, and that will that will help out. That will benefit our country or our GDP as a whole. But in terms of us as a as a nation, um, looking at other emerging other mm -hmm. emerging countries like your Brazil, in order for us not to reach that level whereby the youth is so unemployed and we are unable the to bulge, yeah, and mm -hmm. we are unable to help them, um, government will have to use more uh, more programs, more initiatives. But for now, as, as as Mr. Boini has said, he's the plan is to create the foundation, and that's something we all have to understand as South Africans. Mm -hmm. That's what he was trying to do this afternoon, to create a, a, a stable foundation, because he's coming, he's, take, he's taken over after like five years of mismanagement of, mm -hmm. you know, stagnant growth, mm -hmm. and here he is meant to, you know, solve everything. So he's trying to lay a proper foundation so that Come for the coming years, we will then be able to be like um, the finance minister of Botswana, who says that by 2021 um, they will have a, a, a budget surplus. Uh -huh. You mm -hmm. know, so we could actually aspire for those things. So for now, I think every South African should just say, let's 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 build. You know, let's see how this foundation settles in. Let's not judge it too soon, um, mm -hmm. and let's see how we could all contribute to make it work for our betterment.
Well, those are my guests, uh, Zanele Kunene, who's an associate financial planner at BDO Wealth Advisors, as well as Kopano Mere, who's a growth hacker from the fund factor. Stay with us. After the break, we'll be joined by a panel that will be focused purely on ESCOM.